Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play, or er, not Let's Play, but Super Metroid 100% Club, and this is Breach. Hope you guys enjoyed our run through the wrecked ship last time. This time we're running a little bit of cleanup before we go to the next area, and look, I finally learned in between recording sessions how to get up here. Like I said, um, you charge up your Shine Spark, and then whenever you press the jump to launch yourself, you hold the diagonal shoot button. That's the trick to pulling that off. And we get to fight a bunch of Sahajin guys on the way to a power bomb upgrade, and that's all that's up here. And you have to have a power bomb to get in the door, so you can't just sneak in power bombs as soon as you get the speed booster. Which would be really nice, but that would break it a little bit too much. Oh well. Regardless, getting a lot of good feedback on the episodes, and I really appreciate you guys that are watching these and sticking with the series. Really, really makes me happy to see the support on these. So, we're going to go through and pick up a lot of the stuff that we missed along the way stuff that we just couldn't get because there's a lot of areas we can backtrack to now and that and I just want to make sure that all the areas are as cleared out as we can get them uh, this area is one where we got the original missile I don't think there's anything else in here however we will return to this room at the end of the game so keep that in mind, because there is something else to do here at a future juncture. And I, I've i never been able to pull off the Alcatraz escape, so I always just go through here the slow way. Speed it up just a touch by using a power bomb, because we got a lot of them at this point. Might as well use what we have. And honestly, the reason that I'm doing kind of a cleanup episode is mostly because I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of the area we have next in the game. And, you know, it, I, I take the ice beam off here because I'm getting really tired of freezing stuff whenever one shot would kill it. But I'm, I'm trying to put off having to go to Meridia as long as I can. To be completely honest. And now that we have Gravity Suit, we can go do that other thing that was over here that we saw previously, where we speed boosted up, and there was that room, I believe it was the room with the invisible platform, and we were standing in water and we just couldn't jump up to it. We can do that now. At this point, there's only one really helpful upgrade, well two, super helpful upgrades left in the game. The Space Jump and the Plasma Beam. And Space Jump, honestly, I'm not that big of a fan of it just because it never seems to work when I want it to. If it did, that'd be a different story, but you'll, uh, you'll see later on, once we're in Lower Norfair, that I'm just clicking the button for all it's worth to continue the jump, and I just don't understand the rhythm on it. And here, oh, sneaky, sneaky, they hid a missile in the room with the missile. So that even if you were just going by dots on your map, you'd come here and be like, okay, I got the item, time to go. And no, because they hid a missile in the room with a missile. Unless I'm mistaken, that should be, um, lo that should be, uh, Brinstar, Blue Brinstar, Old Brinstar, whatever this place is, cleared up now. I think that was the last upgrade we had left down here. I know we end up back over here just because I powerbomb through the wall that's to the left of here. Eventually. But we're going to make our way back up, go over to uh, 
green Brinstar, whatever it's called. Honestly, these main locations are the ones that I screw up the names of the most. I know there's Craig's Hideout, Ridley, Ridley lives in Lower North Air, there's Upper North Air, Criteria I have down, Meridia, Wreck Ship. It's the Brinstar and surrounding areas that I always confuse the names of. And once again, we get to see the nice little NES Metroid escape sequence room. Because this is, uh, in the original game on the NES, this is where, this is what your escape sequence was. You jumped up this room, as everything's all flashing on screen, telling you, you have X amount of time to escape! And that last little platform was where Mother Brain died on, and Mother Brain was just a nice stationary little brain in a jar. But now... We're back in Criteria. And we want to go up here all the way up. Actually, do I get smart and check to the right there? Not this time. We end up going back there eventually. But we want to go all the way to the left again, just like we did at the beginning of our journey. In these backtracking episodes, I may ramble on a little bit. So if it's too much, just let me know in the comments, and I can try and find different talking points throughout the future episodes, but it's not like there's too terribly much new to point out. Uh, that missile door, obviously the one that takes us down to Turian. But yeah, it... During the backtracking episodes, which there are several of them, there's only really two new areas left in the game for us to explore besides Torian. There's Meridia and Lower Norfair. So we're going to have a fair amount of uh, backtracking left. Which, despite everything I said earlier in the game, is kind of... It, it's a thing that we just got to deal with. And this... This is the room where if you could mock ball, you wouldn't need speed booster to go up and get super missiles early. There's a reserve tank here, and if you go underneath, I don't, I don't remember if I power bomb here or if I just regular bomb. Oh nope, you can just slide underneath. But if you power bomb, there's a good chunk of wall that'll lead you to another missile pack. So, this air, this room is super helpful early on. If you can do a mock ball, you're getting 10 missiles, super missiles, and a reserve tank way early. And as I recall, there's another missile pack down in the room underneath that little collapsing bridge that you have to run over. So, 15 missiles, 5 super missiles and a reserve tank is a pretty good way to get geared up early in the game. And this is a very profitable room. So if you want to practice doing a mock ball, um, what you'll do is you'll jump through the door as you're entering it, and then you'll wall in air. As soon as you land, crouch and go into morph ball mode and it'll maintain your running speed while in morph ball and you can get underneath those uh, those lowering platforms to go up and get super missile and that's how you'll skip spore spawner is by way of the uh, lining up your shots the way I showed you in the first episode so we've got our map Obviously, there's still nothing in these rooms worth going after. My dog is running around going crazy right now. He, uh, he, he doesn't respect any time of day. It's, it's relatively late in the evening right now. So we have a save room there. Might as well go ahead and use it. We picked up a lot of stuff that just be kind of annoying to go grab. Actually, nope, nope, I'm still 
I'm still stuck on that zero mission missile pack. This is another room where we have the fireflies that we uh, we didn't see earlier because there's nothing over here except for a missile recharge station. But because we're on full missiles, it didn't do anything for us. Threw me off seeing this room on the recording because you usually never see this room. Like if you're if you're watching gameplay. Most people who have like a map open or anything like that know that there's nothing over here so they don't bother with it. However, there is stuff down here. All the way down. And unless I'm mistaken, we're about to come up on the, uh, the nice little friendly animals that teach us how to either wall jump or shine spark. Oh no! Oh. Yeah. We gotta come back through here. This is where... This is where we wall jump back up, I think. Yeah, there's an energy tank, but there's invisible platforms. And I think on the second time through this room, I use a... Uh, I use the x-ray scope to kind of line up where they are. And that hippity hop son of a bitch! This, uh, this room is just doing everything it can to troll me. <clears throat> like, every time I, it, it's almost like the AI is scripted to read the controller and jump up whenever you fire so that you miss. I <laughs> know that's not the case, but it certainly felt like it there. And here are the, uh, the Etikoons, I believe is their official name. And they teach you how to wall jump. And by teach you, I mean they do it in front of you and kind of laugh at you whenever you can't pull it off. Now that little mid-air morph ball is not near as easy as I made it look there. I'm really surprised that I got that first try. Which is kind of why I went for it before I went for this little platform down I guess I don't go for that little hole down below. And we get another shot at getting eaten alive. Just go ahead and die, all of you. Ooh, got my power bomb back. Another little shot at this room. There is where we uh, we have our little gap. So there we go, got our energy tank. That's one that I never got as a kid either. Like this was this was honestly my first all of the items hundred percent run. Like actually getting them all, not just kind of knowing where they are. So both of both of these upgrades, I never got. I always fell down the hole. And then after I made my way back, I said, screw this. I'm not doing it again. Because it's obnoxious. It, it really is. So let's go ahead and save here. I believe we save. And we will call this an episode here. I uh, hope you guys have a good one. Uh, it's been Breach. It's been fun. Have a great day.